This video is meant to be a supplement for the Houdini courses offered at Becker College and Lesley University. Uh, in class, we talked about the two methods for shaping rigid body fractures. Uh, the other video, in the other video, I covered the Volnoy fracture, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the new method in Houdini 17 uh, called the RBD material fracture. Now, one thing we figured out in class <laughs> through trial and error was that uh, we get some very unpredictable results if we have a, a primitive shape or any object for that matter and we do scaling up here at the object level. So we want to do any scaling in inside the uh, geometry network itself to get more predictable results from the RBD material fracture. So I'm going to jump into the box object here and now I could do this with a transform node or I could with my show handles tool selected, I, I can just uh, reshape right here. So I'm going to make this box more like a slab like this. And I'm going to hold down the shift key so that I can actually pull it on both axes at the same time in opposite directions, which is a nice feature. And I'll also just uh, move the center up a little bit with this. So if I do, again, if I do my, my reshaping, resizing, whatever we would like to call it here at the geometry level, I'm going to get a more predictable result uh, with the RBD material fracture. So once I create the object, I can then uh, put down the uh, RBD material fracture node. So I'm going to right click and it's out of view here. Um, or I could just type in RBD and find the RBD material fracture node right there. So it'll take a second or two to, to uh, process um, because it's a, a fairly processor intensive node. Uh, it only requires one primary input, which is the geometry input. So I'm gonna wire in the box. And again, it might take a few seconds to process. And then if I put my display flag on the RBD material fracture, we can see the fracture results that it gives us. Now the RBD material fracture has quite a few parameters um, and I'm going to just cover really the primary ones as we detailed these a little bit more in class. The first parameter I'd like to look at is the material type. Uh, we have concrete and we have glass and wood. And if I choose any of these, my parameters below, my shaping parameters here will change. So with concrete, we have primary fracture, chipping and detail. And if I switch to glass, which it will take a second to process again. So we see we get a, a glass fracture shape, which is really nice. Uh, and now our, our shaping tabs look a little different. We have impact points, cracks, chipping, detail, uh, and there's constraints, but that, that we have with, with all three of these types. And then we also have wood, <clears throat> which seems to be the most processor intensive of the three. So it gives me what looks like uh, wood fragments. So I'm gonna switch back to the concrete type and I want to just address uh, a couple things here. So first of all, in the primary fracture tab, uh, the one of the main ways to generate your fractures is by using the fracture levels. So right now we have two levels. Uh, level one and then level two creates fractures based on the fractures in level one. So if I, if I, uh, if I delete the level two, just so we can see what we have, that's what the level one fracture looks like. And we also figured out in class that if we change our noise frequency, so I'm just going to middle click on it here and move it around a little bit, I can coax those points to not be quite so much at the bottom. So the RBD material fracture tends to, uh, by default, it seems to accumulate the points towards the, the bottom of the object. So I just lowered my noise frequency to 0.3 on all three axes and uh, I've spread them out a little bit. So now if I come up here and add, well, actually before I do that, let's look at scatter points. That's the amount of points I have, much like the surface scatter or volume scatter that we have in the when we did the ISO offset and the scatter node for the Volnoy fracture. So if I want more fragments here at this first fracture level, I can just add a few more points in there. But I'm going to keep it really low. I think I had it at five by default. And now if I add a, a second fracture level, level two, level two's fractures are propagated around level one. 
So if I go to the level two, it has the exact same parameters. Uh, it's scattering its cell points by volume and I can increase those and we see that they tend to accumulate within the fractures from level one. So that's one of the, the, the primary ways of creating uh, fractures for the concrete preset. Uh, but one other thing we can do is we can add in the RBD material paint or RBD paint uh, node. And that's going to go between the box and the RBD material fracture. And what that will allow us to do is instead of scattering from a volume, we can scatter by an attribute. So I select attribute here and the attribute that, this, that it's going to be looking for is density. So right now the RBD material fracture node is erroring because it's looking for the density attribute and we don't have that yet. So we have to do that with the RBD paint node. So I'm gonna right click in here and type in RBD again and choose the RBD paint. And then I can wire in the box to the RBD paint and then the RBD paint to the material fracture. Um, so I'm gonna come back up to, I'm gonna put my display flag at the RBD paint level and start painting on this surface. So if I have the RBD paint node selected and my show handles tool selected, I should get a volume paint brush and I can change its, its radius by just using the spin wheel on my mouse or I can type in a value up here. Now by default, I'm not really gonna be able to paint here unless I get near a vertex like that. And the reason for that is because this is a vertex paint type tool. So in any 3D application, when uh, we're doing vertex paint, our, our paint really only has the resolution of whatever our, our, the density is on our geometry. This box only has points in the four corners, so that's the only place I'm gonna be able to paint. That doesn't really help us with a uh, with the RBD paint because you know I might want to put them in the middle here. So what's great about the RBD paint node is that it has this parameter over here called division size. And if I activate that, it essentially creates, let's call it temporary geometry or, or points uh, that allow us to paint more uh, more detail and you can see here it's it's already picked up what I was trying to paint before so if I use my middle mouse button I can paint this out to get rid of you know what I had already placed there so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just make a, put some paint right in the center here make sure it happened on the other side also and we'll see there's the output attribute density so now that will be fed into the RBD fracture, material fracture node. Now it says it's still erroring out, but hopefully when I click on it, there we go, it updated itself. Sometimes you have to give Houdini a little bit of a nudge and select the node below that was erroring out and, uh, and then you, you should have a predictable result. And now we can see that because my cell points are being scattered by an attribute, which is density that it's getting from the RBD paint node, now my fracture points are accumulating more around that area where I painted. So this is a nice methodology for controlling where our fracture points are. Uh, but I do wanna point out that the RBD paint is really designed to be work, to work with a concrete material type. When we switch to glass or wood, uh, then we don't use the RBD paint. So this is exclusive to concrete. So now let's do a quick rundown of the other two material types. So in order to do that, I'm going to remove or maybe just simply bypass the RBD paint. And uh, now it's airing out because it's looking for that uh, under concrete here. So I'm gonna switch the material type now to glass. And now my air has gone away because the glass material type is not looking for the density attribute from the RBD paint. So uh, some of our primary shaping parameters we have here are scatter points. So I can add more scatter points. This adds more impact points basically. Uh, and then I have cracks and chipping. And uh, cracks allows us to, do, to adjust the, the radial shaping and the concentric shaping. Uh, now in in class next week and then in the subsequent video we will talk about using input points 
uh, which is a great way to really control exactly where we want these impact points to be. Uh, and then the material, if I switch my material type now to wood, a couple things that we figured out in class as well is that this can be really processor intensive. So to move these sliders around, uh, sometimes it, it lags quite a bit. So what we can do is sort of lower the detail in order to get a more interactive or get more interactive performance from each of these sliders. And then once we we figure out what shapes we want with the the parameters, we can increase the um, let's say the resolution of the <clears throat> the shapes more. So uh, one in particular is a grain noise. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, no, it was a grain spacing. That's what we were looking at in class. So if I increase the grain spacing, uh, it's basically creating less shapes. So that gives us a little more, um, you know, better performance because um, it doesn't have to generate so many uh, fracture points. Uh, we also figured out that if we take our splinter density and lower it, it also essentially is giving us less, less detail. And now if I come back and start adjusting various sliders, like for instance, curve noise, I get a more interactive speed here. So lots of parameters. And as we did in class, we just sort of um, experimented with these. Uh, so I just wanted I wanted to point out the splinter density and the grain spacing as a way to uh, lower our our resolution, so to speak, of the the wood fracture uh, that would then allow us to experiment with these other parameters a little bit easier. So I'm going to stop this video here, um, and I'm going to create another video that talks about how we can take the RBD material fracture and or the Volnoy fracture and actually build our dynamics network for them.